patch 9.2 is here, so let's talk about gearing. It's something that's actually a bit different this time around. We've got no frustrating systems like domination shards. I mean, hell, instead of that, tier gear is back and with a little layer of bad luck protection as well that uh, we didn't have before, so good news. And also, if you're starting a new alt, as I have been, then getting up to speed is somewhat faster than ever. So let's dive in. Your main catch-up gear is the item level 226 tokens available from the vendor in Haven that cost 500 anima each. Of course, also remember, you can send anima from your main to your alt. You just have to go to the NPC by the Flight Master in Ouroboros. Now with this, you'll get a full set of eye level 226 gear in no time. Now, if you've got the cash to burn and the crafters of it honored with a new reputation, which will take a few days, uh, well, you'll be able to buy the full sets of item level 233 armor. This of course will get your alt up to speed in absolutely no time, so that's great. Plus, there are some special new effects via the optional reagents. So these are gonna be things like extra drops from mobs, increased flash duration, avoidance, AOE, move speed, and others. So that's pretty great. Now crafters are also able to make that same crafted gear at item level 262, but you'll only be able to equip one bit at that high of an item level. So uh, that does mean that even the mid to high end players will be rocking some of this crafted gear, which of course means one of those buffs. Now also, if you hit friendly with the enlightened faction, which will happen very quickly, then you'll be able to unlock an item, and this item will unlock every conduit on your character and it will set them to item level 226. Hit revered, and it's the same, but I level 239. And with that done, the easy catch up done, it's time to talk about the more proper zone gearing of Zareth Mortis. We've got two types of gear to talk about, Cypher gear and Sandworn gear. I'll do the sand worn first. It's simple, it's quite slow, and it's a pretty neat transmog appearance. It's item level 246, which is just below normal rates. This is not going to be your main source of world gear in this patch, but it may supplement your cipher gear progression. So you get this gear from this vendor with sand worn relics, and it's simple enough. You'll get some relics for doing dailies from that hub, some rares and sand worn chests. The chests drop the most, so they're the most important. Now these chests appear in the Endless Sands area of Zareth Mortis, and they need a key to be opened. Getting that key is just a matter of killing moss worn mobs in the Endless Sands area for the fragments, then just get five fragments and you can form the key. Now you can loot these chests multiple times a day, but in my testing, only the first chest in a day would actually give me sand worn relics. Now this gear is a slow grind, but it's got a neat mog, and hey, it's two, four, sixes that you can pick up. Next, though, the far more important type of gear, our February pins on Patreon. Okay, maybe it's Cypher gear, but hey, check out the Patreon link down below. You can get the pins for this month, as well as the art for It Is Bard Month, and uh, the other things that we do there. It's the best way to support the team. With that said, Cypher gear. Cypher gear really is the main event for those of you who are not going to be going and doing loads of raiding, Mythic Plus, or PvP. And unlike those types of gear, it can actually have some special effects within Zareth Mortis. Now, by default, it drops at item level 233, and it drops from, well, I mean, rares, some daily quests, the fill the bar quest you get from Bolvar, world quests, it's the usual really, but it is random. Now, treasures, I mean, like, treasures even have a low ch drop chance. It's just one of those things you'll sometimes get this gear. The item level that it drops at will depend on how far progressed you are through the cipher of the first one system. But rather than having select, you know, specific upgrades increase the drop item level of the gear, instead, it works based on how much currency you have spent on the cipher of the first ones and it will actually go all the way up to item level 252 once you have spent 3,700 ciphers. So you might then ask, how do I get these ciphers? Well, it's easy enough. World quests, daily quests, rares, puzzle caches, gyros, the latter there, the gyros, those are interactable, uh, basically once you get a bit more acquainted with the cipher upgrade tree via Pokepok, who's the, uh, the little sort of companion friend you get in this patch. Of course, the fill the bar quest that you get, uh, that also drops them. 
as do some of the regular zone treasures. And I would definitely recommend doing the one-off zone treasures. Those are just the ones they have a really, they have loads of currency in them. So once the add-ons like Handy Notes, Tomcats, etc., are updated, I would recommend just grabbing one of those and doing a quick world tour uh, for a burst of those resources. Of course, that's only if you are concerned with, you know, getting that gear up pretty quickly. Oh, and also the patch 9.2 world boss. Now, if you're really serious, you can make your way to the bottom of the Alic research tree. That actually will unlock a vendor who will sell an item that increases cipher drops by 50%, but at the cost of 150 ciphers. Now, of course, as with many WoW systems, you will want to spend ciphers before you go and do something that could drop this gear. If the ciphers that you'll spend will boop you up to the next level of cipher gear. It's just one of the usual WoW things. Technically, you can do stuff in the wrong order. That's not all though, actually, because this gear is a bit more special in Zareth Mortis. And while the specific slot varies based on armor type, you will get a piece that lets you socket in some of the zone buffs. Uh, those are the same ones that you get from uh, Pokopok and the Cypher of the first ones. So that's what's going on. Now, the clear downside of this system is there are no item upgrades. So in Corthia, you would get the bits of gear randomly, but once you did get those bits of gear, you could upgrade that gear. So eventually you'd sort of build up a set as the weeks would go on. In Xerath Mortis, there are no upgrades. It's just always a random drop from doing that content. But of course, you increase the item level that the gear drops at by progressing through the cipher of the first ones by spending those ciphers. Overall then, this does reduce the feeling of building and upgrading a set over time. I think it's a pretty major usability downgrade. I'm not sure why they did just didn't give us a way to upgrade a bit of gear, right? Because certainly people are going to get frustrated that maybe, you know, they have a few slots and they are just not dropping. They're just not spawning from the world quest. So it's a bit of an odd usability downgrade from the previous patch, to be honest even though this gear does have a few cool upsides and then it confers those zone benefits. I mean, a full set of eye level uh, 252 stuff, um, you know, with the zone buffs, like you, you'll feel pretty powerful in Zareth Mortis without having to touch raid or, you know, any of the other content. Next, we've got tier, legendaries and cosmic flux, which is the currency they both share. Flux is used for both crafting the new Rank 7 Legendaries and then also converting Season 3 Shadowlands gear into tier gear. But neither of these things are going to be available from day one. Clearly here at Blizzard don't want this be, being something that you just sort of turbo do for super early progress. Now the downside is that Mythic Plus players will have to wait a little bit because without this system, well, the Great Vault is going to be their only source of tier gear. Now this currency, Cosmic Flux, drops from everything. Uh, Mythic Plus, PvP, Raid Boss Kills, uh, Torghast, Xerath Mortis World content. You will get plenty of Cosmic Flux just from playing the game, in my experience. Now, the first way to spend this is your Rank 7 Legendary, which will be item level 291. Of course, do try to craft your Legendaries, uh, you know, in a different slot to the, uh, the tier set slots. Now, the crafting pattern for the Rank 7 base items, that's unlocked at Honored with the Enlightened and uh, completion of Chapter 5 of the campaign, meaning it's going to be unlocking on Week 3. Now, the Rank 7 LEGO costs 2,000 Cosmic Flux. Uh, there's no extra Soul Ash or Cinders needed for that rank, so a 6 to 7 upgrade, that will only cost you the Cosmic Flux. Now, as well, if you're going to be recrafting, let's just say you're going to move something from Hands to Ring, do be sure to use the legendary recycling that was added in patch 9.1.5 um, on the rune carver. Next is double legendaries, which honestly are very simple. The campaign is going to give you a item level 265 legendary waste with the covenant effect. Now it drops from chapter seven of the campaign, which will be on week five of the patch. Now, if you would like to put the new double legendary power on any slot, then you'll need to unlock the memory of unity. This requires revered reputation with the Enlightened Faction. But the good news is that the way that this is paced is that if you do all of your dailies and your weeklies, then you will have it unlocked by the time the belt comes out without the need for farming rare mobs like people often really felt they had to do in Corthia. Then the final use 
for Cosmic Flux is crafting tier gear using the new Creation Catalyst, which unlocks in week eight of this patch. It works simply. You just combine a piece of season three gear with some Cosmic Flux, and you will get a piece of tier gear that will inherit all of the attributes of the bit of gear that you put in, such as sockets, uh, Mythic Plus upgrade ability, PvP upgrade ability, the PvP item level mechanics, and tertiary stats, but uh, it will have fixed secondary stats. Now, this system is actually throttled through energy. So at the start, you can only really do one piece at a time and you'll, you'll regain the energy uh, over the days. And the reason why they've done this uh, is different to, say, the conduits. Basically, they don't want people feeling like they have to turbo farm Cosmic Flux just to get tier, right? Um, so the way that it works then is on your main, you'll be able to use this system kind of sparingly. But if you're starting a new alt way after week eight, you know, maybe weeks after the catalyst unlocks, then because of the way the energy system works, you'll actually be able to craft loads of tier from the get-go. Now, you can even turn non-tier set bonus bits into the tier gear, uh, which is basically just useful for filling out your transmog. Now, while the raid is still, of course, going to be the fastest way to get tier gear, especially in the first, uh, you know, weeks of this patch, uh, this system does provide bad luck protection and it does open up tier gear a bit more to Mythic Plus and PvP players. I mean, it would need to, otherwise they would just be relying on the Great Vault for tier gear and that would be a big RNG fiesta. And then the nice thing as well is you probably won't need to turbo farm a whole bunch of Cosmic Flux because you'll just get it from the high level content you're doing anyway. PvP gearing then. So, Honor Gear starts off at eye level 203 slash 239 when in PvP, and it goes right up to 242 slash 259 in PvP. Now, previously, this pretty neat Honor Gear was made basically irrelevant because of the time gating behind Renown, but the good news is, is, is that if you're already above Renown level 59, you'll just be able to max out this upgrade in day one by just farming Honor. So that's really good. Um, it just... Ugh. I mean, you know what it's like with the honor gear, uh, how it was in the past, so this is better. Now, Conquest gear is uh, back, works the same way. Um, it is a little bit more granular in its brackets, though, so you'll be able to upgrade a bit more often, and it ranges from, of course, a base of 249 um, in normal sort of content, uh, 262 in PvP content, all the way up to 275 normal, 285 in PvP. Now, what's new is that the most efficient way to farm the honor needed for uh, for those upgrades is actually to do the new solo queue arena brawl. So let's hope that ends up being a fun experience. Now, of course, this PvP gear can be turned into tier gear via the creation catalyst. But of course, that opens up week eight. Uh, still, though, with deterministic conquest and cosmic flux, this is actually a simple enough pathway to getting item level 249 tier gear. Obviously, 249 is like three item levels below normal raid, so it's not mega important. Uh, the set bonuses, though, will be nice for PvP, so I would be expecting PvPers to want to build out their sets once the Catalyst comes out. There's not a lot to say for Mythic Plus. It is much the same as last time. Uh, during week one, we are going to still have Season 2 loot and the uh, Season 2 affix. Uh, during the first week of Season 3, which is Week 2 of the patch, the item level of Mythic Plus loot will also, like while it will be Season 3 loot, it will likely be capped, which is what they usually do. Usually then, they, they cap it around the Mythic Plus 9 or 10 mark, so uh, doing anything above 9 or 10 will only be useful for your Keystone level in the next week, and uh, it won't drop any higher item level loot. Now, while you will want to, of course, be filling up your Great Vault slots if you're kind of really going hard at it, uh, if you are planning to sp uh, spam just a whole bunch of Mythic Pluses above level 10, then the following week, which is week three of the patch, that would be best because that, that's the first week where you'll be able to get uncapped season three uh, gear. Um, so it's best just to get some of your Great Vault slots filled in for week two, and then uh, just, you know, spam some nines or tens, um, and sort of, or maybe just wait till week three till you go really hard at it. Now, the other thing is Keystone Master, because KSM is going to be 2,500 in season three instead of 2,000, which is what it was in season two. And that's because Blizzard have added the two wings of Tazavesh to Mythic Plus. And this does mean it will be a little bit more of a time investment to get Keystone Master, 
Um, which, of course, you will want to do because as you get your rating up, then you are able to, of course, um, you know, have a higher upgrade cap, which is, of course, where you're going to be using your Valor points. The only major vault addition then is tier gear, which in fairness is pretty major because there's a lot of power that comes in that tier set bonus. So the raid, mythic plus and PVP reward tracks have all got a chance to drop tier. And that does mean that yes, you, I mean, you sure are incentivized to max out as much as you can. So if you want that tier super fast, yeah, obviously clear as many bosses as you can, which is, I mean, what you would want to do as a raider, uh, you know, clear as much M plus as you can on as high a key as you can as well. And I suppose the same goes for the PVP arena. I would then say, or don't. I mean, if you're a mythic raider, you probably will want this stuff. If you're really pushing keys with your friends, then you'll probably want to do this anyway. But, uh, you know, for me, I'll dabble in all of this content. I'm not going to go turbo on it just to unlock vault slots, though. And I wouldn't recommend that you do that if you don't enjoy doing that. Now, also, tier from the vault does seem to be able to drop with sockets and tertiary stats. So there is that. But look, unless you are a cutting edge raider sponsored by various nutritional powders and gaming chairs, then you're not really going to need to worry about going mega hard on this sort of thing. You know, don't meta game the fun out of World of Warcraft. WoW will kind of let you do that to yourself, but uh, you can avoid it and have a better experience. Tips and tricks then, well, there's a few other things, like there's also BOE raid gear covering two slots per armor type, so if you've got plenty of gold, then you will be able to just pick them both up. Plus, of course, a bit of crafted item level 262 gear, which could have a, you know, a handy little buff on it. Um, and then potentially some of the Xerath Mortis zone drop BOEs. Those seem to exist, but I mean, if you're like a normal raider or above, they shouldn't matter too much. So that's basically how gearing works in 9.2. Simply put, if you're focusing on Xerath Mortis, then just be really sure to spend your ciphers before you're doing content that can, you know, that can award a cipher gear. Um, so you can you know, upgrade your sort of cipher gear level before you get those drops. Um, and you know, the best way to do that is just to keep the research rolling in each column. And you know, if you've got an excess of ciphers, then maybe think about doing some of the shorter research time uh, bits of research. And then remember too, that the WoW Companion app does support the cipher of the first ones. So if you've got no research rolling, you can always pull out your phone and fix that problem, which I guess is handy enough. Then, as is the norm, content from base Shadowlands and 9.1 is essentially irrelevant to gearing unless you're a total mad lad and you want to farm the random conduit upgrade items in Corthia um, if you've got some outstanding conduits that you want to get. Because, of course, uh, with Revered, you can get every conduit to uh, 239. I suppose you can get them up to, like, what, is it 252 from the Corthia upgrade items? But uh, don't do that. You've got better things to do with your time on Earth. And frankly, I don't think Blizzard want you to do that too much either because they've discontinued the random upgrade system in patch uh, 9.2. Like there isn't a new version of it for your conduits. Uh, and I really do see that as a good sign that, uh, well, I appreciate. Okay, that is it for gearing. Look, if you want to gear yourself up and support the team, you know, we got this, you got the Bard class stand for your desk as well as the art. And we're, we're just doing more things on Patreon um, with, you know, with the loot trying to make things a bit more cool, a bit more narrative. Uh, that's the best way to support our team and also, uh, you know, adorn your house with some cool things. Uh, but with that said, I hope you found today's guide uh, useful. I hope it's just going to let you hit this patch and kind of understand how things uh, work and, you know, that'll make it a bit more fun for you. Have a great day. See you next time.